what was an explosive day at the Senso Miyua murder trial yesterday. The defense says a witness will testify singer Kelly Kumalo pulled the trigger and killed the Bafana Bafana captain. Miyua was gunned down at the home of his musician girlfriend back in 2014. Five men are standing trial for this murder. Our reporter Slindelo Masikana joins us now with more details from the High Court in Pretoria. Good morning, Slindelo. Most certainly an explosive day in court yesterday. I mean, those allegations are very serious. What are we expecting today? Or even is there any word from Kelly Kumalo's side or even her attorneys? Well, uh, before we get to the Pretoria High Court in Fundo, we are here at uh, Loftus where we're joined by Kelly Kumalo's lawyer, that is Ms. Magdalene Monsami. Hello. And uh, she is just going to give us a brief outline as to um, what her clients and her, and her thoughts are around what the submissions were. Thank you so much for your time today, Ms. Monsami. Maybe let's just start with the reaction in terms of what came out of court yesterday. The defense um, pointing fingers at a secondary investigation or a secondary docket called the 365 docket that names your client as uh, as uh, the one who allegedly shot Senzo Mayua by mistake and that the gun was actually brought in by Longwe Twala. Maybe let's just start with that reaction to those submissions yesterday. Okay, the first thing is uh, thank you so much for having me, uh, Slendile and uh, Grisalda. I think the most important thing is to understand one that uh, the defense for one to four has raised further matters in regard to my release from court in the interim, suggesting that I was involved or I had known about a charge relating to defeating the ends of justice, which was um, then created around sometime 2019. That never surfaced. My client was never informed of it, neither was I. I want to give you a brief on the history of this level of uh, kind of intimidatory, legalistic, illegal practice, because if it's legal, it would be then setting the record straight in writing formally. There was allegations of perjury that never saw the light of day. There were allegations of defeating the end of justice, of which there was no police officer that had contacted myself nor my client. Remember, I'm not my client's attorney for the first uh, for the first time. We have a history in terms of her overall uh, life. Thereafter, we are told that there were people who were bought or paid for. I don't want to use uh, certain terms, but let us try and be as subtle on the allegation as possible. By my client. Now my client has pulled the trigger. Can the defense? determine with decisiveness what it is that they want to allege. So in terms of that docket, it is not to the knowledge of ourselves. Mm. Ms. Monsami, uh, Chrysalda Lewis from SABC Television. So you have not seen the second docket that has come out in court, where we understand in that docket uh, your client, Ms. Kelly Kumalo, together with, together with other occupants uh, in the house, uh, in that docket, it suggests that they should be the suspects that are answering to allegations of uh, killing Senzo Moyiwa in the Boss home back in 2014. Do you have any idea of that docket? Absolutely none. All I have heard of in an interview with Kolani was there was a release from the NPA regarding information of the possibility of uh, a note that was written by an investigating officer. To the extent of a docket, and Criselda, the one thing you will realize is this is the reason the watching brief is critical. In a matter where a victim is uh, a state witness, as well as the daughter of the deceased being now exposed because uh, Tinga obviously is young, is the fact that we would then be able to have access and understand what the environment, what the dockets, what the allegations are. When you are even contested on the issue of um, having a charge sheet which is presented in open court to the world, it makes one very curious about what then does the defense for one to four suggest 
when they say they feel intimidated and uncomfortable with myself. Ms. Gonzalez. Because that information is being withheld, Griselda. Mm. So do you feel prejudiced? Indeed. Does your client feel prejudiced? There's prejudice, there's discrimination as an attorney, as an officer of the court. Sorry, I had applied to the prosecution with the acceptance of the, uh, with the registrar, with the approval by the defense one to four and defense for five, and there was no objection. You will recall this, day one, day two, day three, no objection. Even when the objection was raised, it was dismissed by uh, Judge Mamela. So my question is, why is it that information is more accessible to 1010 than it is to myself in an incident where, and we have been told clearly by the NPA, and I've said this to you previously, my client is not a suspect. That was said to me on three occasions. There was a point when uh, Advocate Beloy indicated um, that she may not even be called as a state witness. Subsequently, a few weeks later, after the third adjournment, uh, we were informed that she may be called as a witness. So at this point, ours is now to understand, with the allegations being leveled prematurely, that opens a can of worms. To suggest to an investigating officer, your first witness in the matter, that there is an alleged eyewitness who will testify to such an allegation, a person who is post de facto the, the incident, who is not present at the scene when the crime occurs. It's nefarious. Ms. Monsami, are you planning on taking any action in terms of these allegations? I'm consulting with my client this evening mm. and I can confidently advise that uh, there will be uh, steps that are going to be advanced. Mm. Can what you kind tell of us steps? of the, her reaction in terms of hearing those allegations coming out that she subsequently killed the father of her child? At first, when I, well, I did not want to call her, she was on set at the moment. I sent her a text, I sent her the clip, and I just requ requested her to just breathe, mm. okay? Mm. When we had spoken, her reaction was, I'm a mother. My child was three months old at the time. Uh, how dare he? What do they want from me? Because it started, and this is where I gave you the background of the intimidation. We must hand her over to the police, etc. And she then said to me, we are going to now break the silence. Mm -hmm. So this is where we are at. She's confident. Look, uh, Kelly, you know she's a person of high spirit. You don't get to that level without character development and building. I don't need to describe her to you. Mm. And at this point, has the state then indicated that we will be calling her as a witness as well as the others in the house? The state in, in, the, in, the, in first instance, when we were called in for consultation, we were then later, just a short, a few hours or a day before, told there's no need to interview her further. Remember, we've been through serious interrogations in the past with the ballistics, with forensics, and she described the events of the, of the, of the uh, uh, incident clearly, even though she was, we were very seriously, she was very seriously interrogated. Uh, we were then told, no, there's no need for her to come in, and we then conceded, that's fine, as long as it is in writing. We received that confirmation in writing from Advocate Paloy. Um, we are going to file submission in terms of clarification with regard to her being, because the, the thing that we've been saying very clearly and very consistently, and this is what she said to me yesterday as well, I want my day in court. Mm. So she I want, wants to testify, she wants to be a Yes, person. absolutely. Yeah. She, she doesn't care what level she goes in. Mm. She wants her day in court. Now, Ms. Munsami, I want to canvas some of the issues that came out with the defense in terms of 
how this crime scene was um, treated. They are alleging that it was contaminated, it was compromised, that the removal of Mayua's body, um, that he actually died on the scene and that his removal or, or, or them taking him to the hospital was actually just to compromise further that crime scene. Um, I understand your client was one of those who rushed him to the hospital. The defense alleging that they went to dump his body there. Uh, what is your question, Slindy? Are you concerned that there was an effort to compromise the crime scene? Okay, let's be practical and pragmatic. Okay. We're dealing with a house of what size is it? Okay. How many people, adults, are in that house? Including those who are potential robbers or the ones who had committed the act of murder. Uh, is it practically possible for there not to be movement mm. and not to be some kind of confusion that is it's hysteria yeah. it's a robbery from the witness statements and I'm sure that you may have had sight of some of them you will see that it is clear it was mayhem mm. it's a ro if, if it is described as a robbery with aggravated circumstances on count three murder attempted murder of, of Zandile Kumalo uh, let's talk about understanding contamination. In the law of evidence, one has to understand that, firstly, evidence that is procured. And remember, when a Sergeant Musia starts to discuss and disclose the issues around time, there was a time that the Senator uh, uh, was rushed to the hospital. In between that time, the house is being cordoned off, people are being called, uh, there are people who are being informed. Remember, one of the things that many don't understand is that there's also the medical report of the time of death of the hospital or the doctor who treated Senzo would then be needed. So that is evidentiary proof and fact. We cannot be slamming and throwing allegations into the air without saying but the medical report because the doctor should be in the possession of defense one to five we can't be saying that without testing here's the medical report here's the time of death to make such spurious allegations for me is an abolition of the legal process entering into some kind of sensationalist media popularity uh, 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 situation. I think we need to be practical and understand. For me, it's abhorrent. Uh, look, I do understand that there is significant interest in the matter. We know this. My client has been through public persecution and all manner of things. However, practically, there are witnesses that should be called. The state must call those witnesses who were in the house. Mm -hmm. We don't want situations where... We, and we want to know who's this eyewitness, by the way. Mm -hmm. Do you believe there was any tampering of the scene there? Look, I cannot say because you had... Monsieur even says there's different... There's ballistics. Remember, there is Mangena who's doing ballistics. There's Musia and there is uh, and Lovu and others who are doing forensics. Then you've got your police officers and you've got your senior task team that's doing high-level collection. In between, and this incident occurs unfortunately at a latter part of an evening. You've got a space that is, you know, at some point uh, there is evidence to the effect that the people were kept in one room. Mm. Uh, let us wait for the witnesses to tell us what happened, to corroborate their evidence, to corroborate what happened, and to corroborate then the testimony that comes from the investigating officer from forensics and ballistics. Because the ballistics report will deny or confirm the nature of the weapon that was used. Mm. And to place then the forensics, who's meant to collect blood, um, fingerprints, and any other uh, uh, substance or on the scene, to place that burden of responsibility. And if you recall, on the first day of Musia's cross-examination, he indicated, but my responsibility is forensics. Ballistics will handle the issue of the nature of the weapon. 
The other issue is the nature of the weapon. The weapon that is uh, being tossed around is one that was handed over to the police. Ms. Kwasami, I just want to then canvas this issue of the two of two dockets, two investigations, one crime. In your expertise as a legal expert, is this unprecedented? Is this strange to have two investigations um, and two basically different scenarios on what took place that night? Look, it depends at what level it is. You might have instances where matter is being investigated by the police and then being investigated by the Hawks for different purposes because of the nature and the severity of the crime. It is not something that I don't want to uh, respond to allegations. First, we must have confirmation of those dockets. I want sight of it. But let us, for the purposes of um, objectivity, suggest that there were two. Yeah. Those are the answers that must be provided by the police commissioner, depending on why there were two investigations. Yeah. You might find, and I want to reiterate, you might find that where there's one investigation relating to a forensics issue and the one is ballistics, you can regard that as two investigations equally, because ballistics is different from forensics, not to the largest degree, but to some. So I am not going to vehemently, because I don't have possession of such information, where I can with confidence say what I can, I will, but not just randomly disclose that factually it's not possible. Mm. And up until that point, which is why our submission, which will follow to the High Court for access, etc., then becomes necessary because client is unaware of this. Mm. I'm unaware. If that was the case, I would have also been brought into um, confidence to say, okay, you will have, I was actually informed by uh, Advocate Baloy that I will have access to the documents. I mean, everybody sees it, the cameramen yourself see it in court. What is this need to keep the information that is running through the mill away from myself and my client? And then to anticipate that we would respond in a manner that would be let's fold our arms and embrace the system and the process. No, we can't do that. The allegations of yesterday, the issue of the dockets, of all of the, those matters of tampering of evidence, etc., we want to be able to make submission on it so that we understand. And client must be able to say, okay, this is what happened, you know. Um, so those are things that will come to the fore. How does the client feel about uh, the allegation that was made that um, Central Miwa had died on the scene and uh, taking him to the hospital was part of this whole cover-up plan to conceal, quote unquote, how Central Miwa died, that he was taken to the mortuary to be dumped there. How does your client feel about that? Uh, you mentioned a bit earlier on to say she's feeling a bit aggrieved because she is, she has a child with the deceased. Uh, let's go back to the medical report. Uh, uh, I'm surprised that the medical report, you know, in a normal course of law, one would verify the suggestion of concealment or dumping a body in a hospital with verification of a medical report of the time of death. Um, we had a very brief uh, discussion and she mentioned to me that when he had gone into the, into the, 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 the medical room where he was being um, looked after by a doctor, at that moment she was praying and her mother was crying and that's when she discovered that he had passed. Because from that point onwards, to her knowledge, she was alive. And remember, she was not alone in the vehicle. So for me, Griselda, I want to stress, let us rely on fact in this case. Our, my client has been through intensive um, eight years of allegation. Uh, and now there were allegations of hiring hitmen, allegations of X, Y, and Z. It has now come to this. So for me, I would rather, if the defense was being legalistic, uh, 
factual and based on evidence, they would rely on the report of the doctor, which could not have been tampered with, which was then in, um, because it's a cold case, that medical report would then be in the possession of the investigators. So on the version of your client, Senzo Meiwa passed away at the hospital and not what the defense is alleging? Absolutely. I've spoken to ENCA in the past and I've said to them, she tried to save his life by rushing him to the hospital. It's not an issue of, cons I mean, that is preposterous. I must say that it's preposterous. For one to even think that you can think that at that moment, to want to then conceal a father of a three month old child, all of this, I mean, I don't even think that we should be responding to it. However, the more silent we remain, the more n notorious the matter becomes. I don't see it as a case that is developing. I see it as an underdeveloping mm -hmm. because it is becoming more and more, um, you know, I don't mean to demean this, but uh, almost um, caricature-like. Where these are ca uh, characters in a in a in a scenario that can be recreated and created at any point, the city press will will, will will even inform you that at one point we had gone to the ombuds regarding the allegations of these alleged bought uh, uh, individuals that were met in a mall. Now, where did that come from? From that, so we need to know really, apart from the media not understanding where these allegations are popping from in court. We need to be actively present in court in order to file proper submission, understand what the motive is here. Because the motive for my removal from court was to keep us as, at a distance as further away from the evidence as possible. Mm. Ms. Monsami, mm -hmm. are you concerned that this investigation or this case and the murder of Mayua was botched from the investigation's phase. I will exercise with a level of caution. I do believe that due to the nature of the matter, the you know the seniority, public presence of Asenzo and Kelly, etc., and you know the individuals that. There was an, an, an it's a small environment. Um, it may have been, but this is not because of direct default. The nature of the premises was cordoned off, which meant it was a crime scene. But whatever transpired, there was maybe there, there may be a plan or there may be a clear outcome once we get the ballistic report. Mm -hmm. However, I would not want to place it uh, on record to say that it was botched. That would be a very irresponsible statement on my part. Mm -hmm. This case is going to have, I think this, the, the list of the state witnesses are just about 120 something, uh, apart from the defense. Mm -hmm. We have a long road to travel. Let us not be anxious and impatient because the evidence that will come from the next witness may be able to verify the weapon that was used, which was not able to be verified by the forensics expert because he was very clear when he clarified his role. So I think that the pieces need to come together. For me, what is important is that an investigation is meant to put the pieces of a puzzle together post de facto a crime and then recreate that environment. So I don't want to be irresponsible and suggest such. Ms. Mulsami, uh, what uh, shape or form uh, is your course of action likely to take? I know you said that you'd be consulting with your client uh, this evening, but from a legal perspective, uh, what is it that you are likely to bring? <laughs> Please be frank with us. These are allegations that you say your client feels prejudiced against. There's a lot she's being tried in the public, in the court of public opinion. So 
Not only you the Quran, but there have been, there have been, been charges, there have been charges yeah. leveled against her. Uh, you know, I said this uh, uh, last evening to Tabo. I was once called by Advocate Tefu. He said to me he was in Sun City, and I thought he was at the resort. And uh, I said to him, no, you must enjoy your time with your, with your family, not realizing he was in prison, Sun City prison. And uh, he insisted, whilst he was in prison, that I take my client and hand her over to the police, uh, or else there will be consequences. I mean, the intimidation has been longstanding. Uh, we felt that it was, let's allow the court, let's allow the process to unfold, and our day will come when we can then have the opportunity to present our case in the manner in which the judicial system allows. However, for there to have been no objection to a preliminary issue of an eyewitness which is unknown, um, and to allege that my client, whether intentionally or accidentally pulled the trigger, there are no uh, bars that are going to be held. We're not holding back on anything. What does that mean? What, a, what kind of action are you looking at taking, Ms. Um, Monsami? I know that you're going to consult with your client. What is this like? Are you, are you planning to bring some application to the court? Uh, Look, we are going to, obviously, we have a right to make submission to the court, but we have a right to act in terms of other issues and aspects that have been created and caused in the public domain. Um, you, uh, the one thing you would not know is that we had settled with uh, 1010, that they were not to use any material from my client in their documentary. Uh, they, which they had elicited in a false name. So we had a battle. So there are many things that you're not aware of, Griselda. And one of the things that I said to Tabo last night, and we had a, quite a nice conversation with the client afterwards with regard to identification of the suspects. The first instance when suspects were identified, obviously it was a few weeks, a week or two after. And these suspects are different suspects from that, from those suspects. There has not been an identity parade. So your client has never. The, the, the men who are in the dock currently have not been brought before your client for identification. No. Then whose suspects are they? Who identify them? Police. Well, um, these are the things that we will bring to the fore, and we will inform you in advance but if you want to understand the degree when you see this uh, you know the smoke you know there's fire and we instead just decide to keep quiet about things and it is time after the allegation that was raised yesterday we are taking exception we are not folding our arms we're not going to stand back we're not shaken Ms. Monsami, can you tell me if you're satisfied with how this trial is unfolding? We've got another week and a half or so, and we're not sure whether there's going to be yet another long adjournment, because at this point, all we know is that we're sitting until the 15th. I must say, I'm dissatisfied at my removal for the interim by Judge Mamela for the following reasons, and I will express them. Uh, I have every right to understand what is happening and not be informed by the media of dockets, etc., which is discriminatory on myself, direct discrimination and prejudice on my client, because that removes her constitutional right to information, which one can very uh, 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 confidently suggest, but you can watch TV. It's not the same as being in a courtroom and being able to then draft submission because you can't just be sitting in front of a screen the entire day. What is this discomfort that Defense 1 to 4 has regarding me? What is this intimidation that the instructing attorney has regarding myself? Why is it that myself, as a watching brief, is removed for intimidating and making uncomfortable the defense. And he's just generally uncomfortable. 
So for myself, this discomfort, it dispossesses my value in, this, in the process at this point. My client deserves to be represented. Remember, Defense 1 to 4 was the watching brief of the Meiwa family. Now he's defending accused 1 to 4. The contradiction by its very nature is stark. So I think that when we think about things and we come to you with a full statement, we will uh, be empowered because when we are engaging, we're engaging on fact. We're not engaging on uh, what may or may not exist. And we want to know who this eyewitness is. Obviously, they're going to say they need to protect the eyewitness because of X, Y, and Z reasons. But you know what fascinated me last evening? Was uh, on newsroom, they were at the house outside Foss Lewis. I don't know if you. Uh, and the lady said, nobody wants to speak. The level of intimidation and fear in this matter, even in the community, because I'm not sure who it was that was uh, there. Yeah. Tacho, was it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And said that when you ask members of the community, are you prepared, even if you are forced by the court, they said they will not. Now what we are saying is, allow us, give us a chance to participate in the process. We're not going to interfere. How do I intimidate uh, individuals who are, and you know this is an alternate form of intimidation of women which I take very personally in the legal fraternity because it's nothing new and we're not going to stand for it legally but also I think we need to consider the extent to which this matter has created this kind of general intimidation. So you say you'll be consulting with Ms. Kumalo tonight mm -hmm. in terms of the action you'll be taking. Does this also include you appealing the decision to take you out as the watch group? I'd, I'm not at removed. It was an interim uh, decision. When I'm called, I will be called. I have filed a brief submission and I will file an intense submission again to court. Um, as watch brief, not only for Ms. Kamala, but also remember just as there's a watching brief for the Meiwa family being victims of the deceased, there's also the daughter who is a daughter of the deceased. So th there has been a lot of um, uh, attention around that and that's a concern as well. This is a mother with children who was exposed and alleged to have committed such um, a, a act. And these things, you know, they have a way of creeping up amongst, uh, uh, and kids these days are, are not a uh, laser fair when it comes to information. Um, so these are human factors we must consider. Mm -hmm. when, are, oh, when are they like, is there any indication uh, when, um, They've asked your clients to take the stand. No, there's no indication. Remember, on the first instance, when we were called by jo uh, Advocate Baloy to uh, do a consultation, we agreed and we said, well, first it was a very shoddy thing where we were told there was perjury. And we then asked, what is this perjury that you are talking about? Explain the charge of perjury. We were later called by Advocate, well, I contacted Advocate Beloy because it was another Colonel Stain, if I'm not mistaken, who has been very brutal about these allegations. And I said, look, this is, I'm an attorney. I have to understand, firstly, what is it that this, oh, no, 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 there's no perjury, speak to Advocate Beloy. I then communicated with Advocate Beloy to set up the, the date. He provided a date. A few days prior, he said no. There's no need for a consultation. I therefore ask him, okay, when will my client, we anticipated my client would be the first person to be called. I mean, that is a normal case of, you know, let's remove the, the witnesses and start dealing with the investigation. Because that is the primary nature. You want to deal with the witnesses, so the investigation then gives, um, gives a, 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 a corroboration 
to the witness statements. Then I was told that my client is, is not a suspect. Well, prior, even in uh, Ekuruleni in 2000, and don't remember, but 2000 and something, we were told my client's not a suspect, she's a, a, a witness, and why does she need me? Mm. Now, understand that, as I've explained, the various uh, things that we have been anticipating during the years of which you are unaware. So we've been troubleshooting in many aspects, uh, but very, very generously so. Thereafter, we, re, uh, we didn't request, we didn't ask, we were told she's not a suspect. So we said, okay, when is she giving evidence? She may not be called in as a state witness at all. This is now on day one of trial. Okay. So what's the game? Day four of trial, Advocate Beloy, um, when we called uh, uh, into chambers, informs, no, he, she may be a witness, or she will be, a, we've decided that she's going to be a witness. My issue is she wants to get onto the, uh, into the dock, she, I mean, into the uh, witness box and express herself. And I think that the manner in which things are going if she's not given that opportunity, we're going to have to find one. So are you saying if the state doesn't call her as a witness, will she then volunteer? Will she want to take the stand and just say her piece? She wants to take the stand. That is a consistent, unconditional, not negotiable issue. Whatever that stand may be. Madeline Munsami. Um, All right, thank you so much for your time. All right, Mfundo, that's where we can leave it for now, right now. She, of course, um, that is rather Magdalene Munsami, the attorney um, representing Kelu Kumalo. She is on a watch brief. Um, she was uh, ejected from the courtroom, but she says that, of course, there are plans to um, ensure that uh, she does have a presence. And uh, she insists her client, Kelu Kumalo, wants to take the stand in whatever form that's going to be and it's just unclear at this point whether the state will be calling her and uh, they, she will be consulting with uh, Kelu Kumalo tonight in terms of possible legal action to be taken against the allegations and submissions made by the defense yesterday that uh, Kelu Kumalo shot Senzo Miwa by mistake. Mm -hmm. Very insightful interview. Thank you very much for that. Slindelo Masikane, our reporter there, following the Senzo Miwa case for us which will start roughly at around 11.30 today.